Hey guys, Jaybird here, and we're going to be starting our second part for The Divide. So we're going to be jumping back into the map right now. So I'm going to just open it up. So we'll let that load. So off screen, in between part one and part two, I did a small little thing. Nothing really map related. It was more, I tried to set up the map so that it was done the same way Treyarch does theirs. And I'll show what I mean in a second here. Uh, I'm just going to close down a bunch of stuff. I open up a lot of windows and then I forget to close them. Um, basically, the map's still exactly the same. So what I want to show is that if I select, it's all one prefab now. So I'm gonna get out of game view here. But yeah, basically, the original map down here is still parts and whatnot, but I have the geo of the map as its own thing. Actually, what I really should be doing here is having this stuff not part of my prefab. So I'm just gonna copy, delete, save, and then exit the prefab and then I'm gonna paste it. Okay, so then now this is gonna be the geo. So if I uh, go back into the prefab, you'll notice that this says MP divide geo. So this is all the geometry of the map. So I'm gonna have different prefabs set up Kind of show up, uh, show off my uh, the work that I do. So this way it's more organized. So then what I can end up doing. So if I just want to edit the map, I'll go into the geo section, and then say I wanted to set it up for zombies, I can just copy the geo over, and it doesn't copy any of the multiplayer stuff over. So the multiplayer stuff's going to be on the base map, and then the geo is going to be its own thing that I'll be able to copy over to zombies later. So we're going to just kind of jump back into what we're doing here. So I think. What I'm going to do is kind of work on the river for now. Uh, so I'm going to want to start doing some water going through this. So I'm going to kind of try to find a nice water texture. So we'll go through and this will kind of show off how to do uh, swimming water as well because I kind of played around with this in another map uh, before. So I'm wanting the water to kind of come up a bit so it's, you know, I don't know how deep it's going to have to be for the player. Uh, to actually be able to swim in it. So we'll have to get another default character. Let's bring up the models here. Um, so default. Get a default character and just slap them in here. So the water can be... We can lower it a bit, I think. Probably about there. And then we're going to have our kind of terrain kind of curving in so I'm gonna probably have more of like a wall along here and then this will be like an area to climb out of so let's see if I can find a nice looking water texture so the thing is the water that's gonna be on the surface I'm gonna to want to have as a patch so I'm gonna do a terrain patch so this is just gonna be the surface of the water that I'm doing right now we want to make sure that it covers both sides there. Make sure that it actually goes all the way. Um, oh, we got a stream here. That looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see if I can play around with the water to make it, because that looks really far away, for a really small water for some reason. It's a bit better. I have a feeling, I have a strong feeling that this is going to work the same way that did in World of War. I haven't really played too much with the water in this, so. No. I was thinking that it's going to go in the direction that you would put it, but nah. Oh well. We'll try to see if we can figure out how to make like an actual water flow in a direction that I want it to go. Because as of right now, it does kind of look like it's going off this way. So I probably could just rotate that. Which way is that? One sec, I just need to figure out which way I'm rotating. Okay, so we're gonna go that way. Oh. Alright. So we'll just kind of drag this out and make sure it all lines up. But it looks like it's actually flowing this way now, which is good. And I'm just gonna scale this down and then I'll probably have to stretch it out 
There we go. That looks good. So we got some flowing water going. Might make it a bit bigger actually. So that looks pretty good. So that's just the surface of the water. The next thing I'm going to want to do is actually get a water clip. So this is going to be for... For some reason I found water clip player seems to kill people, so... And also make sure that your spawns aren't in the water, because that will kill people as well. Um, kind of funny. Something to think about and to avoid, because you'll just spawn in the water and die instantly. So we'll just do a water clip. So I'm going to hide my clips right now, so you, so you can actually see the, the little river. Um, and then, so we... This water clip will allow you to swim, but it won't allow you to actually see, un like, it, it'll just look like this. It won't look like you're underwater. So then the last thing we're going to want to add in, if I click B, and I go to PBG, uh, we're going to want to do a PBG box. So Zeroy was the one who kind of uh, told me how to do this. So hats off to Zeroy. So what we're going to do is just kind of this right under the surface of the water and that should be good we just need to make sure that it goes along the whole length of the river now okay so with it still selected before you deselect you're going to want to click N, bring up the Entity Info, and you're going to want to... Which one was it? Use Underwater. That's the one that we're going for. There's a couple other things here. Not 100% sure what it does. I'm still kind of learning what these PBG volumes are for, but they seem to be something vision related. So. I'm actually going to do a real. Oh, actually, never mind. Look at that. The only issue is our skybox goes black. So I have a feeling that there is going to be. Oh, no, I can't select that. That's the one thing I've noticed with, with these volumes is once you deselect them, I don't know how to reselect it. Oh, there it is. It's this guy. Oh, okay. I was wondering how you reselect these. Okay, so there's going to be a node in the center of it that is the volume. Okay. Um, so we want to have the underwater one checked, so that's all black. I'm just going to kind of play around with this for a second and see if I can figure out why the skybox is black. Well, if anybody can figure out that, that would be great. Just leave it down in a comment, but I'll see what I can do to try to figure that out uh, kind of on my spare time. But unfortunately, when you go underwater for now, the skybox kind of just goes black. Oh, it's related to the surface. So I have a feeling there's actually a, vol a value on here that's doing that. Um, is there some sort of distance? Because you see how it goes slightly dark and then darkens down? I'm thinking that there is a value. I don't know which it is. Okay, it's this. Okay. Okay, so we just need to make these values smaller. And my phone, like usual, is always sitting right beside my microphone. So sorry about that. Here we go. Uh, that is probably good. So it seems to be this setting here, underwater mix. So make sure that's not completely black and then you should have a pretty good underwater area. Okay, so we got the, the water kind of going here. I'm gonna unhide my river. I'm kind of curious what it would look like if we flip this as well. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so what I ended up doing is I took the... Oh, here, I'll, I'll do it again just to show you. Okay, so I took the patch, and 
Now a lot of, uh, there's some people wondering how I was inverting patches and whatnot. So you'll notice the patches only got the texture on one side. So I'm gonna copy, so control C, control V. You could, do, you could do space, but space is gonna offset it. So now I have two patches, so one, two. So I'm just gonna undo to put it back. And then what I'm gonna do is just go control I to invert it. So now it's flipped over. So that kind of looks cool, because now it looks like, okay, now you're actually underwater. Okay. So let's try to make this more into a river. Uh, I'm thinking some seaweed and stuff. It's gonna be under the foliage sort of section. Uh, I kind of want to bring up some actual uh, stuff for some some images of what underwater would look like. Just a it, it's a real good habit to try to get some sort of uh, like just images that you can kind of work off of and kind of get ideas from. So I like using a site called Pinterest and then it just kind of shows a whole bunch of different uh, concept art and stuff like that. So I'm gonna just do a, a underwater or something like that and then just kind of look for, yeah, so you can kind of see here, I just got on Pinterest here, just, you know, kind of look around. This is kind of cool. Although we're going for a river, so it's not gonna be looking like an ocean. But yeah, you just kind of look for Maybe, maybe even underwater river. You know, just kind of look around. You might be able to find something cool. And then you can kind of work off of that to get some ideas. Uh, one thing I might want to do with the poles here is have some water splashing on them. So I'm going to do that really quick. Get some effects going. So let's see. Water. Flowing bits. Oh, that's cool. We could probably get some flowing bits of stuff. Where are they? It looks like it only did it like once. Oh, there it is. Uh, nah. That looks silly. I'm just going to kind of go through a few of the effects here and just see what we can get going. But yeah, I think this video is going to be mainly focused on the actual... Uh, the, the river itself. That one's interesting. Bubbles. Could probably have like a plant with bubbles coming out of it. <laughs> oh, whoa, that's weird. They got like a light on that as well. Flow. Well, oh, it's just drips and stuff like that. That's not really useful for us. Uh, the splash stuff, that stuff that I, I'm going to want to look at. So we'll just kind of... No, that looks like like rain hitting the ground. Oh, ground splash. Okay. How about... That would be interesting. You like drag this up to the top here. And just kind of have... Oh, it's, it's one of those effects that plays exactly where you place it. Um, splash fountain, maybe? Splash building. Oh wow, this effect is really bogging down. There we go. And I don't even see anything. <laughs> hmm. Some of these. But that looks like a good one, but it's just it's rotated the wrong way. I can't seem to rotate it. I might go with that splash one that we had before. Which one was it? Sides? The only issue is it's coming out this way. So what I'm going to do is a little effects editing here. 
So we are going to have to close a lot of stuff because effects seem when you make effects they take up a lot of windows. Um, well, actually, I probably can do the majority of it with properties and outliner. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate a lot of this. So let's go to movement, down to rotation. Actually, it's probably generating the splashes on a, on a line or something. So I could probably uh, let's see effects now probably be better. So I'm going to convert all of this to effects now so that way it might be able to rotate with the actual so you see how it's on that line there I'm going to rotate it and there we go we got it kind of with some rotation there I might want to try it because it's still kind of off to the side I don't know you know what I think that's okay so we're gonna just kind of I'm gonna save this as a new effect so I'm gonna make a oh whoops uh, I just did save effect. I just overwrote an effect. Don't do that. <laughs> Whoops. So I have a folder called custom where I've been kind of making my own stuff. Actually, you know what? Instead of custom, I'm just going to make a a new folder in the main one. And I'm going to just call this MP divide. And this is going to be effects for our, for our map here. So I'm going to call this effects uh, water splash. And then I'm going to just duplicate this and put it over to different poles just so that the water's flowing into the, the poles there. And there we go. So I can get rid of the effects browser stuff. So it's just really quick effects editing there. You'll notice some of them aren't playing because uh, they kind of stop. So if I just stop, this is how you play effects up here. So I just stopped and started it. So now they're all playing again. So if I go into game mode, you can kind of see we've got a little bit of splashing going around there. Probably work with it a bit more. But let's go back to the model side of things. So I'm gonna bring up the models again. Um, kind of looking for images again. Looks like we just got twigs and rocks and vines and stuff like that. So we can probably just place a bunch of like this stuff. And to kind of go with the current, because there's going to be a current here, what I plan to do is kind of have all foliage and whatnot kind of arced back from the current. So we'll just kind of do that. You know, just kind of place them randomly. I bet you this coral stuff's probably more from an ocean, so just bear with me. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of throwing stuff in here. Wow, that's really big. Um, let's bring that down to about 0 0.2. Actually, 0.35 probably. Uh, 0.25. And this already has kind of an arch to it, so I'm going to have the arch facing down the river. And so we're just going to want to kind of do some variants. So they got a whole bunch of these vines here, so I'm just going to... What the heck? Why is this one blue? Bioluminescence? That's weird. 
is like glowing. What I'm going to try to do is keep the vines kind of off to the side. We need if these had animations though. Well, since they don't, I'm going to kind of arch them back a bit. Uh, no, we don't want the bioluminescent one. So, something that's a little more natural takes a lot of time to work with. Uh, I'm just going to kind of rotate these around and then I'll flip the rotations back. Something like that. So I'm just gonna try to like do section by section here sort of and then we'll kind of go off of what we can do there. Yeah, I don't really like that one there. So I'm gonna probably add some rocks and everything just kind of, you know, just gotta make it look like it's a river under there. We'll probably have to add some bigger boulders and whatnot as well. So I'll probably do big boulders up there. And what I'm thinking is it might be neat to add like a little netting to go along this. So why don't we try to find something like that? Probably going to be net. Probably use one of those. So I'm just gonna work off of one of these. I'm gonna just turn one of the faces into a terrain patch and kind of arc it over. Let's try to make it a lot, a lot smaller texture so that it looks more like a net. Okay, so we got that kind of going. I'm thinking about water height. I'll probably put some rocks and stuff back there. Uh, let's kind of make this kind of dip into the water as well. Add some loop cuts here, kind of make some variants on it. And I think that should be okay. I'm gonna uh, normal that again. And we'll, actually, I'm gonna light map it and then bring it down. Actually, that looks too straight. I'm gonna natural and then bring it down. And I'm going to fix this texture here because you can see it's all weird. So I'm going to select this vertice and I'm going to hold alt and then kind of just drag it to kind of fix it. And then that fix messes this one up. So then I got to do the same thing there. This one's kind of a bit off. So I'm just going to drag those around to kind of fix it. All right. That looks very vertical. So what I'm going to do is add a loop cut in here. We'll have some vertices just kind of out and in and whatnot just to kind of change it up because it's not in the real world going to stay in one position like that. So there we go, we got a little netting going along there. I'm going to do that to both of these. And since we got the netting here, we probably need some sort of pole or something, some sort of beam. So I'm just going to copy and paste one of these guys and make it a lot smaller. We'll make like a metal texture and kind of just place it over where the netting would be. Whoa. Whoops. I right clicked on this and dragged it off. Um, so I'm going to bring this down quite a bit. You know what? I'm thinking of doing a pole actually instead of just a metal beam. Go patch, primitive, cylinder, let's get a metal texture going. I 
come on, load. <laughs> okay, so... What's this? Good enough, I'd say. Good enough. I'm gonna add some more vertices by holding shift, clicking square brace. And then I'm going to just drag this back onto the pole. And I'm gonna wanna cap the top of this thing. So control C while holding it. And I don't want one on the bottom, so I'm going to deselect, delete that one, increase the vertices on the top. I'm probably gonna want this arching so it doesn't look like a really flat thing. So there we go, we got that, we got a little arch on there. I'm gonna select both of these, natural. Hmm. And then what I'm going to want to do is maybe duplicate this and do some dirt coming up the bottom. So we'll do that, get our dirt texture, click U to show shown textures and get rid of that filter. We'll do the mud that we had before. So I'm just gonna double click on that, make it non-colliding. And then I'm gonna go G to bring up the vertex color editor alpha. We're gonna bring that down to zero. So just make sure it's non-colliding again. Um, I'm gonna drag this up a bit because it's underwater. But you can see we kinda got like some dirt on the bottom there. A little subtle, but you know, it's nice. So we got that pull. I'm just gonna copy and paste this pull over. And we'll do the same thing for the other one. So just copy and paste these poles. Should line up pretty well, yep. We'll select all of these again and we'll put it to the other side with the netting. Okay, copy, paste. Drag it over to this side. And voila. So I'm gonna add some rocks in there as well. So we'll go boulder with you, boulder. Okay. Let's see if we can get some nice looking boulder rocks back there. So what I'm trying to do here is just kind of make like a cliff. This is not going to be playable, uh, but I want it to sh kind of show like rocks and stuff behind the netting and that like that's what the netting is the purpose of it is to prevent the rocks from kind of falling into the river. So that's kind of the idea of what I'm going for here. I hope that's not snow. When I tested rocks before it looks like they have snow on them, but it wasn't when I went into game. So. I'm gonna go off the assumption that that's not snow. Ooh, wow, that's a big one. I'm gonna probably bring that down quite a bit. I sure hope that's not snow. <laughs> okay.
So right now I'm just kind of making a cliff wall out of a bunch of the same models, but if you rotate them you can get a bit of variance in it. Um, so I'm just trying to make it look a bit different each time I copy and paste one of these. Okay, but we're gonna probably need some more boulders kind of in there. So we'll just kind of go rock and see what we get. Okay, so come on, load. <laughs> that is a pretty big rock. They got lots of these huge rocks in here, it's crazy. I might be able to use this one, but just like scale it down. There we go, just kind of get some rocks going there. Be interesting of how I'm going to implement this as a zombies map for the water part. Like, be kind of cool to have it so that you're actually under, like, could do this underwater here, and there'd be like the zombie risers under here. What I'm also thinking is taking these bigger, or their smaller ones and kind of like upscaling them, kind of doing some rocks on the ground. Just kind of... Yeah, I'm going to copy a bunch of these. Oh, come on. Actually, I'm going to copy them from over here because I didn't like how far away that one was. So I'm going to copy a bunch of those. We're going to model scale, scale this to about like, a, uh, let's see, like 3.5. And then kind of offset. We'll go 3.3, change it up a little bit. some rocks going there. What else do I want to add? I wonder if water would come up with anything related to like grass or something like that. Water tank. <laughs> filtration nothing okay so we're gonna go back to C and see if we can get some more stuff from that in the foliage section oh yeah and we also got our vines so we should probably be placing our vines over a bit more I didn't mean to select that so we had a couple back here as well drag this down here get some more vines going Strike some over here. Remember, I'm just trying to keep the vines off to the sides, and then that way we want the kind of center here to be a bit more clear, but still look like it's got vegetation and stuff like that. Kind of drag some of these around. Oh, that's a really flat one. I could probably go and put that on the netting. Although I don't like how it looks. <laughs> that one's not bad. Uh, I think it'd be better suited for a wall or something. Like model scale this up to like 2.5. Drag it down and over. Yeah, just something like that. That's cool. Okay, we'll do that to the other side as well. 
doesn't look half bad. Put it on a couple of these here. Actually, I can't even see that one, so we won't put it there. Uh, let's see, let's try to get some more models. So I'm kind of just spamming models here because it's just a river. Uh, the majority of this is kind of just a plain terrain and then that's it. I could do some terrain uh, stuff up here still, like, but uh, let's try to let's try to focus on getting our rip, getting out of our river now. So we got our patch going here. So what I want to kind of go over is I have a really wide distance between these here, but what I'm going to want to do is, you know what? I actually realized I don't need this section here. I just want it from here because I'm going to want to do a patch that's kind of, that's way too high in my opinion. It's going to come down to like here. And I'm going to do my same trick as before. I'm going to copy paste this, click V. I'm going to drag the vertices off somewhere. And then I'm going to go control I to invert the texture. Then I'm just going to select this one, click W to merge it together. Let's drag this one up a bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is select this, select this, and I'm going to go control shift A to add a new loop here. Because I want trails kind of dip on the in the, the middle of it. So I just kind of want it to dip down, even down here, it might slightly. We'll add another loop. Maybe drag this down like that. And another one up for this side. And I could probably blend some other textures along the edges of this trail. So you'll see that when you get out of the water, you, this is going to be like a trail that arcs this way. So we'll just go and light map that. Copy paste. Maybe add our pebbles on the middle. So we'll go and select. Why don't we select all of them? Make it completely invisible. And then I'll just kind of like select here and go. Okay, we got some pebbles going. And there as well. A little bit of a trail. Make it non colliding. Copy paste. We're going to now do our probably dirt and we're going to blend that sub so zero and then I'm, I'm thinking of having like a concrete wall should probably get this a bit more detailed as well I'm missing one of my patches here Which patch am I missing? The middle one. Why is it not selecting this one? No, it's selected at all. Why the... Huh. Oh, there we go. I'm being stupid. <laughs> I What I was trying to do was add a loop cut for all of them, but the middle patch wasn't out here when I was trying to add that loop cut. So I only added it to the bigger ones. Like, see how it just did it right there? I did it from the outside, so now I gotta do it to the inner one as well. So we'll just kind of make it a bit more curved looking. And we don't want this to stay completely vertical like that because it is curving. So we'll rotate this. And then I'm probably going to do some loops here because I'm going to want the dirt to wrap around like this. So I'm going to copy, paste, and then get rid of a whole bunch of vertices here. So we're going to go to about there. So right now I'm going to be doing the dirt, so I'm just going to do dirt, select all this stuff and make it zero. Make non-colliding. What I can probably do here is, okay, so I got the dirt selected, I got this dirt selected, light map it, and then There we go. 
Now it looks like it's wrapping around the corner there a bit. So now I'm going to make a cement wall. Probably could just use that cement there. So we'll go and drag this over to here. And let's say we want it about that high. Probably gonna have it curve in somewhere, so I'm gonna. Okay, so if the river's flowing this way, you want it to arch in so I can go wider out this way. So I'm going to cut it here. So I guess I haven't really gone over cutting brushes yet. Uh, what I just did there was I held control, I right clicked to create a point, and I right clicked to create another point, so then it's gonna create a line between them, so it's gonna split them. And then to uh, basically, if I click enter, it's going to delete one of them and save one of the other one. Although I don't remember which one it does. What I do is I hold shift, then click enter. Then it'll allow you to keep both of those. So that is how you split a brush into two brushes. So we're just going to curve that a bit. I just realized this side came off the grid because I went to a different grid size. So we'll do that. I'm actually gonna go and make these a clock texture and then I'm gonna go back to cement. And then I'm thinking kind of like support beams, sort of. Have that come down and then possibly have it arch out at the bottom. So I'm going to make that into a triangle and kind of do something like that. So I'm not sure if I want to do this as a separate texture as the one that I just did, like maybe more of a concrete. And then I, uh, it looks too plain though. I might be able to get away with using a trim. how scaling brushes, the texture on brushes, never works as well as it does with uh, terrain. Nope, it was this one that I wanted 0 0.5. So what I'm doing is just setting the texture so that it will repeat this many times, 1 and zero, uh, 0 0.5. I'm thinking maybe doing that with this one as well. Although... Uh, no, nah, I think 1 and 1 was good. So we'll match that. Nope. Uh, let's get this to go down that way. We kind of got a support beam going. Oh, I'm gonna rotate, better have this one go up because I don't want that seam like that. So we're still optimized here with the cloth texture. So let's go and place a bit of support beams around here. thinking you probably have some sort of like sewer drains coming out of that um, just gonna look up some sewer pipe images yeah could probably have some flowing water maybe so one thing I do not like here is my terrain is very flat very very flat and it also needs to curve around this so uh, I'm probably going to have to add some more loop cuts I'm going to want this one to line up kind of with this corner here because I'm going to be stretching out this side to here. 
actually go back. I don't have my middle. I need to fix the this area quite a bit. Oh man, I messed up one of my patches down here. So I'm just going in and doing welding, which is W. I did this in my terrain patch tutorial. Okay, that, that looks okay. So I gotta remember to have that selected this time. So I'm not messing it up. Oh, I forgot to select this thing at the top now. Okay. What am I missing now? I can see there's still one more thing that's not moving. Oh, that's the water. We'll move the water over as well afterwards. So, natural. Wow, what the heck? That really wants to be a light map. Okay. I'm just gonna add some loop cuts in here. I'll probably end up getting rid of these ones because we don't really need them unless we gotta bring them back later. But for now, I just got that. And then I'm gonna stretch this to here. So we got more water going there. We gotta make sure our volume reaches out to there as well. So I'm going to just drag that out. And our clip as well, don't forget the clip. Okay, I'm gonna hide clips again. Okay, so I'm gonna probably blend some more dirt over this stuff. One thing that I actually just noticed with the texture, and I could probably incorporate it into the actual design of this, is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna split the brush here, probably bring it down a little bit more, and. out, bring those down, okay so what I'm just kind of doing here is trying to make it look like there's like a little inset area, that might be too much though, hard to say at this time, um, but I'm going to just kind of copy paste add uh, one in the middle and do my little trick for testing out if it's actually in the middle. So I'm just gonna measure this out. So we'll do that, 116, I'm gonna drag this over, put it to this side, and you can see it is way off from center. So I'm gonna deselect that one and just see how far off I am. 24 units, so if I move it 12 units to the left, it will be centered. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go, centered. Okay. So now we're gonna do patch, primitive, or patch terrain, faces terrain. We're gonna do our dirt stuff again. Uh, so dirt, dirt, where was the dirt? Okay. So for this section, I'm gonna do here to here. And I'm going to add vertices probably about there, there. Get rid of the middle one. Yeah, something like that. So I'm just kind of making... What I'm going to do is just select these inner ones and make them basically transparent. And I'm going to do natural, make non-colliding, and the upper ones I'm actually going to make a bit fainter. So we'll go and make them a little fainter, but we still get that little outline going. Non-colliding, you get the little dirt outline around the edge there. Um, what else did I want to do? I think that's about it. So we'll just copy paste, move that over to this section as well. Colliding, and then I'm gonna look for a pipe. So we'll look for a pipe right now. Uh, what is this? 
Oh, that is a cool looking texture. Looks space-like. Um, I'm gonna go, let's see, let's see if Sewer comes up with anything. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, okay. Model scale 0 0.5. 0 0.4. That'll be cool. And I could have like a little stream kind of coming down there. Okay. That is actually pretty neat. Is that right up against the wall? Yeah, it is. Okay. This is going to be interesting. I am now going to have to cut a hole in the wall. And yeah, that's not going to be fun. So let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm going to do my cutting trick here, for cutting brushes. I'm holding control and right clicking for selecting points. And I'm just going to kind of go around the outside of where it's going to be. Okay, so now we got a square in the middle. And what I plan to do is delete that. Uh, actually, don't delete that. Patch primitives, oh, patch primitive cylinder. I'm going to invert the texture. We're going to go with the metal. Actually, do we have a metal already? I'm going to do the bevel, the, the bevel trick that I did in my tutorial. So we're going to go right to the center of the arch. Center of the arch. We're going to go patch primitives bevel. And this actually, it, it always does it randomly, but I decided to do it for this side. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. We want it to be the same amount of vertices as this, so and it looks like it already is, which is perfect. So what we're gonna do is control or shift C, sorry, inverted bevel, because we want it to be this this area here, so it's all the blue area, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna deselect this, we can't see on the inside, so we'll get that, select this one, and do our texture there. So then I'm going to copy and paste and rotate this and put it to the other side and middle mouse for the texture, select this one again, copy paste, rotate, and bring this down, and middle mouse. So these actually are going to be weapon clip. Actually, no, yes, weapon clip, weapon clip. So we'll hide this, hide this. This is gonna be weapon clip, hide that. Just so I don't forget, I'm going to clip this off so the player can't go through it right now. So we'll do that, and then... Wow, I haven't even used any clips yet. Clip. Okay, so I'm going to show, and why don't we start dragging out our pipe. And then kind of arching it around the corner there. So all we have to do is arch it around so it's off view. So regardless of what regardless of what angle you use, it's going to or whatever whatever angle you look through the pipe, you won't be able to see the end. So that's good there. So we'll go select both of these and do natural. And then that should be good. Because I don't want light coming through the other end, what I'm gonna do is cap. Deselect this, deselect this, and I'm just gonna do that. So, even though we don't see this, actually, uh, what I'm going to actually have to do so light doesn't come through is copy the whole pipe, copy paste, and invert. So, the texture is gonna be on the outside, and that's gonna stop the lighting from coming in. So, there we go, we got our pipe, bake the lighting kind of gets darker when you come back here, but if, if it was a night map, you wouldn't be able to really see back there, even if there's light up here. Uh, so why don't we get this texture and get it to flow through here. Okay. So 
So I'm going to start off by just doing patch, primitives, actually terrain patch, simple, 2x2. Two two. We'll drag this up, select the water texture. It's already flowing in the right direction, which is great. I'm curious if it's a blend texture, because if it is, what I might be able to do is drag this into about here. I'm gonna try something here. Let's see if it works. It does not look like it worked. <laughs> oh well. So it's not a blend texture. We're gonna have to blend some water along the sides then just to make it look a bit better so I'm gonna go patch curve so convert it over to a curve patch and then I'll just rotate this hopefully to the same degree as what this one was that looks good that looks good so we got it wow that actually does look like it's curving around the corner Awesome. Okay, back to the effects. Effects browser, okay. Water, actually let's just look waterfall maybe. Impact. Um, hmm. Got a couple of models I know of the waterfall. Water, fall, maybe. Oh God, that's uh, big model. Even if I model scale that, it's probably going to be too too much. We'll see though. You know, it's not bad. It's not bad. If I did, did it like that, uh, it's going to have to go 1.5 sorry. Or 0. 0.12 looks pretty good I might need to raise the water up in here to match with the waterfall then because the waterfall is starting up here and that makes this wider because it's going to match the water there meaning that we got to drag this stuff out So we got that. I'm going to select the patch again, and we're gonna add more vertices. Okay, probably need to add one more level of vertices in there. This patch is getting a bit complex now. So I'm actually going to have to arch this stuff back a bit. And what I want is to kind of bring this down a bit and back a bit. Which means our wall now needs to come down a bit. that that looks about good so now we got to fix the dirt patch because now our wall is arching down so I'm gonna add another loop there and bring this down here this can come down a bit and we'll do natural So there we go, we got the dirt patch there, and then I'm going to want to copy and paste this guy. Down to here. So this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna have to do some 
texture manipulation or like effects to kind of cover up the stuff. Oh dear lord, that's backwards. Okay, I'm gonna have to rotate that around then since the texture is not cooperating. Okay, so we're gonna do some more water effects. And I could probably get this splash kind of over here as well, our other effect that we made earlier, or kind of edited. So I'm just going to stick that there, place it up a bit. Water, 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 water. Yeah, we'll play with it a bit more later but we kind of got a little sewer pipe coming out there we got this what i want to do here is oh i'm gonna actually have to cut this one to match so i'm gonna follow along this one and then drag this one out to match with this guy here oh lovely it doesn't line up with the grid So I just cut it there so it was on the grid. Um, we're gonna wanna rotate this. I don't know what angle we're on though. 30, no, less than 30. 20, looks good to me. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this because we want the supports coming along here now. But now we gotta match this angle, which isn't gonna be fun because I picked a completely arbitrary angle here. Uh, so I'm gonna be coming off the grid a bit, it looks like. So it seems there was a 116 unit wide gap, I believe, but I don't need to be perfect since I'm on the corner. So that looks pretty good. I'd say that's pretty good. So we got the little little bit going here. What I'm thinking is uh, this is gonna be a pain in the butt to do with the arch. So what I want to do, oh wow, this has gotta go under this. Uh, what I was thinking was it might be neat to have a bevel. And what I mean by a bevel is a 45 degree kind of thing, like where I'd cut off the edge of this. So it'd have like a little edge there, but that would be really hard to do with the corner. So my plan here is to do a, a patch. And I just realized we are actually at our one hour mark now, guys. So it's time to compile the map. So I'm going to back out. Like I said before, if your spawns are underwater, it's going to kill the player. So let's put this guy on the bridge just up here. And we're gonna bake the lighting in a second here. There we are. Lighting bake is done. We're gonna save, close out of this. Yes, I want the lighting. And we're going to go and compile. So let's do that. Hopefully this doesn't take too long like last time because this isn't the first compile anymore. This is now the second compile. So not only do we have more stuff, but it doesn't have to convert stuff that we did in the first one because it's already got that stuff converted and it just popped everything over to my second monitor there so if you guys couldn't see it doing the compile and stuff it's because I'm playing around on the second monitor now while this is doing its own thing so we're kind of working on the river here um, 
progress is still going pretty slow. Like I said, all this terrain stuff's gonna go pretty slow, but when we start getting into the buildings, that's when it's gonna start speeding up a bit because buildings are a lot easier to work with than terrain. Terrain's a lot more finicky and a lot more free, whereas um, when you're working on a building, you're working on a grid usually. So it's like, oh, I got this grid laid out, you know, and you're making the, the shape of the building. That's, that's That can go by pretty quick. Whereas when you're dealing with terrain, it's just like, okay, well, you know, I need to add bumps and grooves and whatnot, and then I gotta models for rocks and all that everywhere, and eh. So it, it adds up. So it should get a bit quicker later. We'll see how that goes. Looks like we're still converting some of the newer images right now. Yep. Yeah. Now it's doing the effects. Yeah, careful when overwriting the, the, the effects because I kind of did that to one of them. So now I actually don't have that water effect anymore. It, or at least it's it's now going to be set to effect on uh, effect now, like what I changed it to. But it should be okay. It's not like I was probably going to use that base one to begin with. Yeah, so it looks like it's almost done. There we go. So now we're about to jump in the game. So we'll go test that out and see how it looks. So when I do the map layout of this map, I'm gonna have to also keep in mind that it's gonna be for zombies. So I'm gonna have to try to think of how to make it not too open as well, because the zombies map aren't very open. Uh, so I'll have to think about how I wanna do that. Because if it's too open, it's easy to train, but I can always add different sections to the zombies version. Okay, so loading it up. Hopefully the swimming works. And I'm glad we figured out the whole underwater black skybox thing. I'm glad I just kind of played around with the settings and got that to work. Hopefully it looks fine in game as well. So we'll see. Uh, I'll just pick the CUDA. Okay, any second now. Okay, here we go. There we go, we got some water. That actually doesn't look half bad. Look at that, guys. A little river here. The lighting still needs to be to work because it still doesn't look like my gun is underwater or my arms. But under here, like the vision goes all blue and whatnot, which is good. Oh dear. Oh dear. I think that's due to me not having a, a, a reflection probe covering this area. Something definitely that I need to work on. But yeah, that's the, the water part here. We got a little, little sewer over here. And I clipped it so I can't go in the sewer. We'll have to work on the water and whatnot, because that looks pretty basic and silly right now, but, you know, we'll get it to work and make it look nice. But yeah, there we go, guys. That's going to be it for this tutorial, or not tutorial, but this viewing of the map. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we're going to be doing another part soon, and hopefully starting to work our way up this direction, because I'm planning to have more of, like, a building up here and whatnot, and we'll have, like, roads going along, so... Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.